Good morning, everybody. <laughs> tough crowd, tough crowd. You on Facebook can't see how everybody's just enjoying the mingling and talking, and they don't know that the two best songs are up first, and they're <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> All right, I know. I can start without them. You can't hear what we hear. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Just like to welcome you all here and, and online as well. Um, uh, I am on my own this morning and have uh, no backup singers. So <clears throat> if I get a tickle in my throat or something like that and I stop singing, just keep on going in your homes and here in church as well. Uh, we have a drummer again, which is awesome. Get Mike to sing? <laughs> he won't. <laughs> He's like, no. Um, anyway, I'll just uh, open in prayer. So, dear Lord God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for this time together. Um, and, uh, Lord God, I was just praying earlier. You know our past, and you know the days forward. And so in this uncertain time, Lord God, you've, you, you just have everything under control when we don't think it is. So we thank you for that, and we're going to learn to trust you. And uh, we just will praise you and lift your name this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Have I got the wrong song? I do. Sorry. My worship team is looking at me like I have two heads. Because I actually change things. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is the right one. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me.
first one again. You reach from the sky, leaving heaven's throne. I was meant to die, but you wouldn't let me go. All the riches of your grace, I could not afford. 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught.
Good to see everybody uh, here today, and also welcome to those that are watching us online. Uh, before we go any further, perhaps as we were worshiping this morning, you perhaps felt a, a word that you'd like to share with us from the Lord. We would love to hear that. We have a microphone all set up. You can come up and stand up in this area here beside me and give that. Or perhaps someone has a testimony. Uh, last Sunday morning, I talked about the power of testimony, the strength of testimony, the need to glorify the Lord through testimony, the need that encourages each one of us to, to, to praise the Lord through testimony. So I wonder this morning if anybody has a testimony, something you would like to give thanks to the Lord. Ah, Margaret's coming up. Awesome. Somebody break the ice. Good job. So, uh, Margaret, come on up and share. <laughs> it's all set. You don't... No, you can take, take oh, it now. Yeah. I, I don't know how that works, but yeah, go ahead. Wear a mask at work. I don't really... Anyway, <laughs> I won't go there. Um, I just wanted to testify the other day. Um, I felt like I was getting a migraine, and um, I've never... The last few years, I've started getting migraines a little bit. And uh, anyway... Um, just it can, different things can affect me and whatever. And anyway, I just said, Stan, I just don't feel good. And um, can you pray for me? And so immediately we prayed. And uh, I was fine within a short period of time. And I'm just very thankful because it can go into sometimes a couple yeah. days of not feeling good. And I was working quite a bit this week. So very thankful for God answered prayer that the, it didn't yeah. mount into a huge migraine. So thank you, Lord. Right on. That's great. Thanks, Margaret. That's awesome. Good thought. Good testimony. We appreciate that. Somebody else? Let's have another one. It's great to see Terry and Kelly done with us today. Great, Terry. Yeah, come on up and share with us. It's kind of interesting um, how the this full circle and... and Putting your trust in God is just something that it, it's, it's not always easy. Yeah. It's not yeah. always easy. And we've gone through a whirlwind of changes in our life within the last probably two, three months. And uh, every time we just try to figure out well, from the human side, we kind of mess it up. But we had a big decision to make and something that we had to make really quickly. And we prayed into it. And we just said, Lord, if this is meant to be, then you open the doors and I just have to say that I'm so grateful for what he does for us because our yeah. transition to our new location went really smooth um it was just the wildest thing we ever saw we got two horses that we brought down from Chetwin and we hadn't seen them in three or in in a full year dad's down here mom and daughter are up there we go to get them um daughter we opened up the, the, the trailer, and she's just, yahoo, and boom, into the trailer, away she goes. Mom walked up onto the platform and stopped halfway up. Wouldn't go in, wouldn't go in. Now, mentally, we're saying, we got a timeline here. we got to get out of here. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. We've got to get you loaded. This is the human side saying it. And we got to get down through the canyon before it gets too hot because... <laughs> There's issues, right, when you're doing, packing horses. Make a long story short, four and a half hours. And the whole time, Kelly and I just said, we're, 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 like we could feel the frustration, we could, but we kept praying. We just kept praying, God, if this is in your will, if this is in your will, we need her loaded. We need her to get in there. We need to take them as a pair. We cannot leave one behind because this is the dire straits that we're in. You got to help us here, Lord. And we kept praying and praying and praying on this whole process. And I said, Kel, well, what I need you to do, she's, she's there. Kelly's got the lead into the trailer. I said, I'll just pull a rope around the back end of her and we'll just see if we can. And it was the most, I said, let's just stop for a minute and pray. And we just both stood on that. Kelly's inside the trailer. I'm outside. And we just said, Lord, if this is meant to be, you need to get this horse in this trailer now and we need to get moving. And I'm not kidding, within half a second, I put just a little tightness on the back end of her butt with the rope. Off she walked in, right up, Kelly tied her in, 
got the fig bag going, shut the doors. <laughs> We're out of there. Awesome. Lord's amazing. And the trip down was difficult, but not to the point that it was scary. Mm. He made it smooth. The transition was smooth. The transition into the new property was smooth. So he, I'm just so grateful for him yeah. stepping up and helping us through this process. Yeah. And, and he's amazing. He does it in ways that all of a sudden you're going, that wasn't me. That was the Lord doing that for me. Right. And you know what? He's an amazing God. We need to press in hard in these times of tr trials and tribulations. Yeah. And we need to press in because he's there. And he's wanting to help us. So we need to do that. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate that. That's great. Another wonderful answer to prayer. That's great. Oh, Misty, come on up. Sure. That's great. So how many people have heard a praise report about coffee? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I debate about coming up here, but, I, but it was kind of, there was this whole thing. So in our house, we're coffee drinkers. I'm pretty sure if they take blood, they go, you seem to have so many levels of caffeine in your system. Um, and my mom's a coffee drinker too, but she is allergic to caffeine. So she's strictly decaf. Um, and it can be really hard to find variety packs of decaf coffee. Apparently, they decide that if you're drinking caffeine or decaf, you're boring and don't want flavor. Um, so I was looking on it, and I've been looking for two years, finally found a huge variety pack of decaf coffee. And where normally they double the price on things, same price is the same amount of regular coffee. So snatched it up for so a couple days ago, because it was like, it, so I'm lying in bed, kind of doing evening prayer, and I'm going, thank you, God, for coffee. And I kind of pause and I go, is it really dorky that I am thanking you for coffee? And God actually kind of paused and he said, said, yes, thank me for the big things. But, th like, you can be thankful for the small things, those things where it's like, yeah, it doesn't good. have to be this huge thing yeah. sort of That's thing. It's like... Like, you, you go to the store, and it's like, everything I wanted was on sale this week. That's just, that can be almost just as much of a blessing as that big, huge thing that happens, too. So that was kind of this thing. So I'm doing a praise report on coffee. <laughs> right on. I absolutely love that, because it, it blows me away that the Lord is concerned about what we consider the little things, Right. Uh, it really shows how much he loves us and cares for us, right? So that's awesome. Thanks, Misty. <laughs> and if you're listening and didn't hear that, uh, Brenda said she was very happy for the coffee as well. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. So, Lord, we give you thanks for our testimonies. We thank you, Lord, that you're working in our lives, that you're so close to us, Lord, and you care for the big things, the little things. You heal us. You touch us. We just thank you so much, Lord. Praise God. Um, a few announcements to make this morning, so I'd like to bring that as well. Um, again, just as a reminder, every Sunday now we're doing reservations, and so uh, you need to call the church by, uh, by Friday night. You can connect with me another way if that works. Uh, but generally, through, through the church uh, phone number, just leave a message there. Uh, you won't get a call back. I'll get it. No worries. You're in. Uh, if, if I call you, it means I've we've got to work something out. But normally you're not going to get a call back. It's all good. So by Friday night, I'd also just would like to go on record that worship teams uh, also please call in as well because that will help me. Uh, I need to know if you're coming by yourself or if there's a spouse or some, somebody else coming because we're trying to make it uh, work for everybody, okay? So, so just, just a little thought there as well. Uh, offerings. Again, we're trying to minimize the amount of touch points in our, in our church. And so we're continuing, we will not have offerings uh, in, in the service. We're, we're continuing on, as you know, with PayPal, with e-transfers, and you can use the debit machine. Uh, and then you just put on the basket there, and Cheryl comes by during the week and, and collects them. So, so just to be aware of that, uh, I hope to start, I'd like to start another uh, life group uh, again, an online life group. I was absolutely delighted with the response last spring that we had to that. We had quite a few people joining us, and it was phenomenal. 
We usually assign a, a little video of five or ten minutes duration that you have to listen to during the week, and then we just check in, hang out a little bit, see how everybody's doing with each other, which I love. To me, that's a big part of it, is just the opportunity to connect. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we've had people gone up and saying, boy, it sucks to be isolated. Yeah, you, you know, some others say we're excited about this in our lives, but, you know, it's just sharing, right? The good things, the difficult things, the positive things, just being together for a few minutes. And so I've found that very valuable. We go from about 7 till about 8.15-ish, 8.30-ish at the latest, and uh, it's very, very good. So if you're interested in that, please connect with me, and we'll, we'll get you in. It'll likely be on a Wednesday night. It's going to be a few weeks yet before we get rolling, but I just wanted to kind of plant that seed as well. And in case you didn't know, one more thing. We put on the signboard outside the church this morning. It is Firefighters National Memorial Day today, which was established uh, uh, by our federal government uh, a few years back. And so just so you're aware of that, so uh, we try uh, in, in the church to make use of our sign to talk about church stuff, but also to support the community and bring our attention and the community people towards various things going on. And so Thank God for our fighter fighters, firefighters uh, that do put their, their lives on the line. They sacrifice their time, their energy. They do a whole whack of training as well, and they put themselves in risk. And so uh, if you're running to one of our firefighters over the next few days, uh, please uh, be kind and also just recognize them, appreciate them for the work that they do. So there you go. So those are our, our announcements uh, for this morning. We're going to look into uh, uh, God's Word together today, and so uh, let's just pray together before we, before, we, before we do that. Could we do that? Lord, we thank you today for your Word, and, and uh, it is indeed a joy and a privilege to be able not only to have Bibles, whether we have them uh, paper, leather-bound, or we have them some kind of a... Uh, on our cell phones, on our iPads, and electronic devices, whatever, Lord. But the point is, we have the Bible. And it's more than a keepsake. It's more than something that collects, collects dust. But it's something that you have said we can understand. And we do. You speak to us so regularly out of your word. And we're so thankful for that. And so we come with great confidence this morning and in faith. And we take our Bibles and we open our hearts and we say, Lord, speak to me today. Share into my heart from your word. Anoint as it is brought forth and anoint our hearts and our ears, Lord, that we would be free, that we would be healed, that we'd be ministered to in any way you so desire today. In thy name, Lord. Amen. Yes, well, um, I would like to talk this morning. Last week, I really fell on my spirit and heart to, to speak about the, the power of testimony, the importance of testimony. And so that is actually recorded. It's on our church website. If you want to watch it, you're certainly welcome to do that. We've been uh, putting them on there. You can find it on Facebook, on the church Facebook page, of course. But we also put them on our church website. So you can go back if there's a message you want to listen to and, uh, and do that. But anyway, that being said and done, we talked about that. And I appreciated the response to that. And this morning, this morning it was great to see a few people come up and just give testimony. Just talk about the Lord and Say what the Lord has done. You know, it just touches all of our hearts. We hear something very real, right, that's going on in somebody we know, right? And so please, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, be open. And uh, if you have something to share in weeks to follow, we want to hear that. We want to hear the prophetic words, but we also want to hear those, those, those times where the Lord has touched us because it encourages us all to believe and to trust in the Lord as well and to glorify Him. I wanted to continue on this week. Not directly talking about testimony as I did last week, but I, I would like to touch on, on, on how that praise is testimony and that, de, de, that levels of praise come out of that and worship out of our testimony. And so I'd like to take that message and just move it in that direction a little bit, if I may, about the significance of praise. So, uh, so, so let's do that. Th there is a progression. I believe that, that as we testify, that as we share the stories of what we feel God has done in our lives, it leads us, it is a form of praise and thanksgiving, but it leads us into progression of loving Him and worshiping Him and giving thanks to Him as well. And so I'd like to move us in that direction. Psalm 107 and verse 8 is the first verse we'll look at. Psalm 107, verse 8. Now, I said that repeatedly last week. 
It's, it is noted four times in Psalm 107. It is repeated. It's verse 8, verse 15, I think it's verse 22 and verse 31. All say exactly the same words. But one of the things I didn't mention or didn't focus on is this. When it says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Isn't it interesting that it does say in there, let them give thanks to the Lord. And so that is that not praise? To give thanks to the Lord. It says give thanks to the Lord. Testimony is about magnifying the Lord. And it takes us on this trajectory of giving more thanks to him and giving praise to him. Now, let's look at that from an example. If you tu turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, I want to read a few of the verses. I'm going to read the 17th verse. And it tells the story of uh, 72 people that the Lord sent out. He sent them out in groups of two, right? They'd been watching the Lord. They had been with the Lord. Uh, in various capacities, and they had seen him lay hands on people, and they would be healed. They saw shriveled hands restored. They saw people that couldn't walk that they could walk. They saw people that, that were depressed and oppressed delivered. They saw people that had demonic issues set free. All these sort of things that the Lord had did. I mean, amazing the amount of miracles. I mean, they just enjoyed watching him, and they hung on his every word and watched every time he laid his hands on somebody and saw the profoundness of the results in people's lives. Must have been amazing. They enjoyed that. And now the Lord says to them, now guess what? Uh, enough watching. It's time for you guys to be released, and I'm going to send you out in groups of two, and yes, I am now giving you the authority that just as I laid hands, you saw me how I did it, now I want you to do that. I am releasing you to go out and share with others. Well, I'm sure they gulped a little bit uh, when the Lord said that. We'd rather you do it, right? You know how. You know why? Why? But the Lord said, no, we need to multiply this. Let's multiply the glory of God. We want more people to see. I am limited in this one body while I'm on this earth. So, so I want you to go. And I am commissioning you. I am giving you the authority. The Holy Spirit is releasing you to go. And so they went. Perhaps with a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of uncomfortableness, they moved out. It says in Luke chapter 10 and 17, when they came back, it says this, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. They came back and they said, holy smokes, wow, this is amazing, Lord. You sent us out and it just blew us away. We put our hands on people that were sick and they were healed. There was amazing things that took place. And they, they went out in groups of two. So they were all debriefing with each other. And they were excited about what the Lord was doing. And, and the power of God that was moving through their lives. They had experienced profound, profound responses of deliverances and healings. And so they're sharing the stories. They're giving testimony. They're talking to Jesus. And they're, they're high-fiving, you know. And they're, they're, they're doing like Terry, Terry and Terry and I were doing earlier. You know, we kind of... Now you're trying to do this elbow thing, you know. So, so you, know, you know, all this kind of stuff is going on, I'm sure. And, 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 and in it all, Jesus began to speak to them. And he says something, which we're going to read the verses to follow in a moment. But what I found interesting in Jesus' response to that was that he recognized that this can be pretty heady stuff. This can be pretty heady stuff. There is something that it can touch within us that can bring the focus back on us. And Jesus was reminding them that the main character in the story is the Lord. The main person involved here was the Spirit of God. It was the Father through Jesus Christ that commissioned him to go out in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was God that did it. And so, and so he's the main character. You're not the main character. And, and, and so testimonies were never intended to be an end unto themselves. It's not about you. It's about him that people walk away saying, oh, boy, isn't that cool, Stan? What an awesome guy you are, Stan. Oh, the Lord really used you, Stan. No, that rather that if the, the greatest compliment would be, isn't Jesus wonderful? 
Isn't Jesus wonderful for us? Isn't Jesus wonderful? Wow. Wow. Isn't that what it's about? And, and so Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He reminded them of the focal point here. He brought them back to focus, you see. And so, so there is a danger in that. And so, and, so, and so that's why he said that, I believe. And so, so we need to recognize it. That's what praise is. The story of our lives was intended to magnify the Lord. There is a scripture that I love in Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. And Jessica reminded of, us of it last Sunday morning when she led worship. And she talked about being a youth. And how she had a hard time and a struggle with this particular uh, verse because it talked about laying your crowns down before the Lord. She talked about that. You know, she says, well, I just, you know, got this and now i got to give it back. You know, and, and so she talked as a young person about how she struggled with that. And, of course, now as a, uh, as a woman, she, she understands that in her maturity and what it means. But I, it, it reminded me of this verse. And so I'd like to read it for you. It's in the, the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Chapter 4, and I'm going to take a, a little section out of verse 10 and 11 in Revelation chapter 4, where it tells the story of how our lives, our life, the end of our life even, when we are with Him, is about magnifying God. For it says this, They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. What a phenomenal, phenomenal, potent kind of, a, kind of a thought that is here. It talks about how when we see Him, all of us, the full body of Christ, isn't that going to be amazing? When we are with Him and we are in His very presence, it says we will take our crowns. And we will lay them down before the Master. We will lay them down before the Lord. What's that all about anyway? What's that about? It's about praise. It's about us coming to Him at that moment and laying before Him the stories of the battles won. We're talking about the battles won. The victories that have taken place, the awards that were given to you, the recognition that was given to you for the service that you did in this world. It's like it's going to be this tremendous, you know, you, know, you, you have to sort of just, you're just trying to imagine a little bit here and use your imagination. But it's like this tremendous award ceremony that's going to take place. And perhaps there will be one of the main angels up at the front at the microphone. Well, we won't have the microphones like we do, but, but you know what I'm saying. Up at the front, and there's this huge hall, you know. We're having this amazing meal. I tell you, we, we, it's decked out, you know. And we're there, and we're all there with the Lord, and the angel gets up. I mean, we got lots of time when we get up there, right? We don't have to worry about going to work the next morning. We, we got lots of time, right? So relax, you know. We're with the Lord. We're with each other. And so, so they bring up this, you know, so this person, all of a sudden, the angel begins to highlight. And so maybe it's, maybe it's Stan Rukin. Maybe it's Brent Dustin over here. Maybe, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's Olivia over there. Whoever it is, it, he'll get to all of us. But, but the angel gets up and he says, okay, I want to bring before you one of, my, one of the Lord's servants today that we're delighted to have here today. And he, here, are, here, here is what this a person accomplished in their life. This is, they followed their dream. They followed their journey. They impact so many things. In fact, what they did impacted not only their generation, but it touched the next generation. And it touched this person over there. And then, oh, did you know? Some of you didn't get it. Hey, so-and-so, stand up over there. That person got saved over there in Asia, over in Thailand, because of what happened over here. 
and everybody's going, holy smokes, this is crazy. And, 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 and the angel continues to go on and lift up the, the, how this person responded and, and what they did for the Lord and the awards are then, you know, so whether it's a physical crown or not, who really cares? So the point is it'll be a recognition. And then this person in Stan's fictitious story here that is based on reality, this person stands up perhaps with tears in their eyes and says, and says, but it was God. But it was God. It was Jesus. I gave my heart to him and he stirred my heart and he, and he did this and he did that and he, and he brought this set of circumstances together. That person responded, yeah, but they didn't respond to me. I spoke the words, but the Holy Spirit came upon them. Lord, we all know it was you. We all know it was you. And we lay it down before the Lord. Because he is the one who is worthy. And so he says, I remember. I saw. And I want you to know I saw. How he responded to me. And we reflect and we respond and say, yeah. But Lord, it's really all because of you. You stirred my heart. My heart was broken. I was... I was down in the dumps. I didn't want to live anymore. I was gonna, I was gonna kill myself. And then you sent so and so along, and they, and they, and they, and they spoke into my life, and the Spirit of God came upon me, and hope was birthed, and I gave my life to you. It was a joy. It was a pleasure. Right? That's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about. Right? It's giving praise. There's gonna be lots of praise given. You know, uh, Margaret and I had the 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 privilege tell you a story. Margaret and I had the privilege of, of uh, planning a church and starting a church in, in Abbotsford, B.C. back in 1991 when it started. And I still remember the opening Sunday, Margaret. I was thinking about it the other day, and I think we had 84 people showed up on Sunday morning. It's just crazy, you know. We went through a whole process of planning and so forth to get us to that place. But I remember still the, the, the first Sunday service. All these people showed up, you know. It was phenomenal, and, 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 the, and the church went on. We saw people come to know the Lord over the next several years, and people baptized in water. I think we still got pictures in different places of that. and uh, I can see some of them right now. People strengthening their faith. Others, their gifts stirred. A, a lady who was in a big church uh, who ha hadn't been able to play the piano and felt a little uncomfortable, and she became a phenomenally released in playing the piano and a blessing to so many you know, there's so much I could say about what happened in that church and in that church plant. But however, I must say, and all the results we saw and the joys that we saw and the blessings that we saw and the relationships and the family connection that we saw, I must say, it was the Spirit of the Lord that caused it all to happen. I can remember walking, I can remember a day of fasting and prayer in Sirs, Manitoba, and we were pastoring just a year or two before that, uh, and, and the Spirit of God stirring me. And I went into a day of fasting and praying and talking to the Lord because I felt we were to plan a church. And at that point, I was thinking it was probably going to be in Ottawa. And, and, and I was trying to figure out, because I'd never done that, and I was still a young man. I was still just in my late 20s. And I'd been pastoring for eight or nine years at that point, and, and uh, we had little children, and I didn't know how this was going to work, and yet I felt God stirring, you know, start a church. And I don't know how in the world does that work? And, and I, I felt the Spirit of God begin to stir me, and, and, and I had this vision. And in the vision, I, I, I was taken back to a time in my life with my dad. And my daddy and I were going for a walk while I was back on the West Coast. And we were going along through a meadow, and, and it was one of those scenes like, the, the, like my daddy and I were there. I was holding his hand. And I felt so comfortable in, in feeling the strength of him and his care for me. And we're walking down this beautiful, beautiful meadow where the maple trees were, 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 in, were, were, were growing and just vibrant on both sides. And, and we walked together. And it was, I felt so good. And, and then all of a sudden it opened up into this amazing meadow, which was absolutely gorgeous. And we began to walk out in the meadow together and then I got my eyes off the meadow and I looked at his hand and then I looked up and I realized it was no longer my 
daddy holding my hand, but it wasn't my daddy holding my hand. It was my father in heaven was holding my hand. And I felt the Spirit get pen and paper. And I started to write. And the Spirit of God at that moment said to me, and I wrote, I still have the journal. And he said to me, it, it, he said, Stan, he says, I, I'm taking you on this journey. All you need to do right now is just hold my hand. And you hold my hand and I'll show you the next step. And then I'll show you the next step. And then I show you the next step. And we're going to walk out in this meadow together. And it's going to be beautiful how it opens up. Just hold my hand. And that's what I got out of that day. To say, I got to plant a church because Jesus held my hand. Because Jesus held my hand. Then later on, I had a dream, and I saw myself coming down as if I was in a plane down into the Fraser Valley, down into the Chilliwack Abbotsford area. And I knew it was in. Because we had already gone out to Abbotsford, we had gone out to Ottawa. We thought we were supposed to start a church in Ottawa. And we went out there, there was a, across our denomination, they were talking about start, we needed to start a church in our capital city. And so I had gone out there. We took a week's holidays, and we went out there for a week. And uh, we met with two or three families that we felt a deep connection with. And, and so we, we took that to mean that that's where we should go. But then it didn't kind of come together that way. Later on, you know what happened? We ended, up plant, we ended up pastoring for a while in Ed Bradley's church in Maple Ridge, and they moved all the way from Ottawa to that church. You've got to be careful how you interpret things sometimes, right? It wasn't for me to be in Ottawa. Yes, to plant a church, but, but not in Ottawa. It turned out to be in the Fraser Valley, but they all moved back to the Fraser Valley. Isn't that crazy? That's a God thing. And then I sat down with Stan Powers, a brother in the Lord, and, 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 and we were talking. He took me for lunch. I was back in college. He took another year of training, and he took me for lunch, and he said, Stan, I don't mean to discourage you from going east to plant a church, but says, we could use another church in the Fraser Valley. There's Abbotsford is really growing. It's going to grow the demographics. Why don't you do a demographic study for us, you know, and practice some of the skills you're learning and see what God says. And, and the Lord began to stir in our hearts. People began to pray. And then, and, and, and then, and then through the whole thing, we sh uh, in sharing and connecting, people were drawn by the Holy Spirit together. And by the Holy Spirit, people came to the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, people decided to follow the Lord, and so on and so forth. So somebody would say, say, Stan, Margaret, you started a church. Well done. I'd say, it's all God. The Spirit of God, he gave me a vision. He woke me up with a dream. He held my hand. He brought the right people into my place, into my life. He Release the resources. And that's what we're talking about. And that's giving testimony to the goodness of the Lord. If we, if, we, if we go up to a whole different level, I suppose, in some ways we could talk about the Apostle Paul. Paul saw so many saved, so many healed, so many epistles are attributed to that were written in New Testament. Amazing man of God, the Apostle Paul, established so many churches. And one day, he perhaps will stand before the Lord and be given crowns and for what he did. And he will stand up there and he'll probably remind us and he'll say, as he stands, he says, wait a minute here, wait a minute. It was Jesus. I was on a Damascus road. I was heading, I was heading to Antioch. There was, there was murder in my heart. There was evil and darkness within me. I wanted to stamp out. I'm sorry, Lord. I wanted to destroy what you were doing. I did not know it was you. And so I was on my way with letters to arrest, to torture, to see, to see kill those that called themselves of the way. But Jesus on the road, you arrested me. You, you spoke to me. You appeared to me and transformed my life. You took my sight away, which I couldn't get at the time. But then three days later, you said, Ananias, hey, Ananias, hey, Ananias, where are you? There he is. Ananias was praying. Ananias, bless you, man. 
you were praying, you responded to the Holy Spirit, and you came over to me and laid hands on me, and God took the shackles off. God told me you were going to come, and just, the Lord sent me on a whole other trajectory. It was you. I love you. You are amazing how you work in our lives. I give you praise today. That's what we're talking about, is God's grace in our lives. So we take our testimony, and we magnify the Lord. We magnify Him. We give praise. Isn't that right? To the Lord for what He's done in our lives and what He's doing in our lives. For the healings, for the joy, for the various other things, for the coffee. <laughs> I love that this morning. For, for the headache that dissipated and disappeared. Whatever else that God does for us. Bring it, guys. Let's bring our testimony. This is a great place. This is a, this is a great place to bring your testimony you know, you can practice on us before you take it out to the world, right? Just come practice on us. Share your testimonies with us. Amen. The essence of praise, as I move further into this this morning, the essence of praise in Revelation chapter 19, verse 5 is this. I would share this with you today. Revelation 19, verse 5. Then a voice came from the throne saying this, Praise our God, all you his servants who fear him, both small and great. Isn't that something? Revelation chapter 19, verse 5. Praise is a directive from the Father's heart. A voice came from the throne and said to his people in Revelation 19, as it looks at this future day, and it said, and, 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 and the voice said, praise our God. Come on, people. Praise his name. All you bond servants, all those that have been bought by the lamb, all those that have been redeemed, all those that have accepted the Lord. He says, all you servants who fear him, both small and great, give praise. It comes from the very throne. It comes from the heart of the Father. And so we give praise. And testimony takes us in that direction to praise him to praise means what anyways praise what's that word mean to applaud to praise is to applaud to praise is to give my admiration admiration to the lord to praise is to is to magnify to magnify him to glorify him to extol the Lord in word or in song or in action. It's all praise. It's all praise. It is something, it is something which is in the Bible bi-directional. Bi-directional. That is, we can praise directly and we praise indirectly. We do both. We, we, we praise the Lord directly like this morning, you know, and we're, we're directing through worship and we're praising Him. That's direct praise. We, 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 we praise Him indirectly by magnifying Him to others, right? And we get up and we talk about that, that horse that wouldn't get in there, you know. I spent hours trying to get the horse, you know, and, and, but, then we, but then we give thanks to the Lord that it all came together and worked out. You know, that the Lord came involved in it and that prayer was answered and so forth. We, we magnify, but that, that's, that's indirectly talking about this is what the Lord did in my life. And yet it is directional. It is directed to him, right? It, it kind of all, it's got the whole package in it, right? And we walk away and say, isn't he great, you know? He, you know, that's cool. That is awesome, you know, and the uniqueness of where you're at, how God dealt with that, you know. And, 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 and we can all rejoice and say, hey, if it had been me there or someone else, the Lord, he's so cool. He's so awesome. We, we can't find the, the, the adjectives and whatever to try and describe it all about who he is. But isn't he awesome? And so then the psalm says to us in Psalm 68, 66, verse 8. Psalm 66, verse 8. Psalm 66, verse 8. That was your cue to find Psalm 66, 8. Psalm 66, verse 8 says, let the sound of his praise be heard. And so we find it in Revelation where he said, the, the voice comes from the very throne. He says, praise our God. 
And then we find the psalmist in Psalm 66, verse 8, and he's saying, let the sound of his praise be heard. You know, praise is to be heard, which means it's to be vocalized. It's not enough just to say, well, I appreciate what he did for me and treasure it in your heart. That's important. I'm not saying it isn't. It is important. But he says, we need to let our praise be heard. Let your praise be heard. Share that. Share it. Praise unto him. It is, it is not my way. It's his way. You know? Right? You love someone. You find ways of praising them according to who they are and their personality and what's appropriate. Right? Such as your spouse or your child or friend or however that works. And so when it comes to the Lord, it's the same way. And he has told us a number of ways within the Bible that we can praise him. Right? And so, but I would focus on that. It is to be heard. It is to be vocalized. It is to be noted as well. So let's praise him. To move on in another direction, as we think about praise this morning, praise, God, God dwells in our praise. Let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, you go so many directions, but let's just talk about that because that's so amazing. God dwells within our praises. It says in Psalm 100 and in the fourth verse, love this, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Psalm 100 verse 4. Isn't that good? And so what's it saying? He says, we come in, see, see those, these are the ta- days of castles. These are the days of walls and fortified cities, right, when this was written. And so we enter into his gates. We come through the gates. We get through the walls. It says, one of the ways is by thanksgiving, you know, just being thankful. And sometimes we can feel like there's walls between me and the Lord. I'm just, I don't know, I'm feeling out of it. Not that anybody here ever would feel that way. But, you know, you're feeling kind of just, blase or you just man i don't know i can't think of nothing you know right you know to give thanks or whatever and so he says you enter in through the gates use thanksgiving that's one way it's not the only way but that's one way you come. just begin to let your mind go to that which is thankful and you know sometimes it can be hard to find that first thing when you're not feeling when you're feeling grumbly or something you know you know but but make your mind find something and then it'll start to unlock and you get Praise to the Lord. Let your praise be heard. And as you begin to be thankful, you find yourself moving closer to Him and freedom and the lights coming on and the warmth of the Spirit responding. It says, so enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. You come in, you can come right into His very courtroom where He is, where he is enthroned, where He ha- abides, where He is. We, we, we come right into the courts, the royal court. That's where we belong. We're, we're, not, we're not on the outside of the wall anymore, but we're right in the living room. We're, we're right with the Lord, praise God. Psalm 22, verse 3 says, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Isn't that right? He is enthroned in our praises. Let me illustrate a little bit in a different way, in something we don't talk about very often. I would share with you the story of the tribe of Judah as an illustration of the power of praise and the strength of praise. And so let's talk about the tribe of Judah in the Old Testament, which is amazing. Uh, Going all the way back to Leah, Jacob's wife, he had two wives at that point, uh, Rachel and Leah. And uh, Leah found herself in a difficult position. She found she was uh, second string to, to Rachel, that Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah and so uh, she was having children and and as she had children she found that that helped bond her husband towards her and uh, and and in the midst of all that she gave birth to her fourth son and she was so excited that she has another son she called him Judah and it says this She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. This time. Now I will praise the Lord. So I'm going to name my son praise. Hebrew Judah. I name him. I'm calling him praise. I'm calling praise. Every time I see him, I'll think of the Lord. He's an answer to prayer. I'm going to call him praise. Praise. 
And so that's what happened. So she gave testimony. She gave praise to the Lord by naming her son Judah, meaning praise. And then a whole tribe of people became known as those of the tribe, of one of the 12 tribes of Israel, those of Judah. And as we go through the history of Scripture, we find and we look at that culture, we discovered that they became known. Judah became known, the people of Judah became known as the praisers. They were the praisers. They were known that way. When, when it goes through and it talks about them prophetically even in Scripture, it talks to them not just as Judah their forefather as being name praised, but they actually became noted as the praisers. And so therefore, God said this kind of stuff in the Bible, this kind of stuff. He said this. He said in, in Psalm 114, verse 2, Psalm 114, verse 2, for example, Judah became God's sanctuary. Say it another way, put it more English. Praise became God's sanctuary. Praise is God's sanctuary. There's something about praise that causes the abidingness and the manifestation of the presence of God, that He dwells there, that it is a sanctuary. When we praise Him, when we lift Him up, the Spirit of God lives among those who praise Him. That's what it's talking about here. That's why that was written. And so Judah became, became a picture to us of something, of a truth that has been magnified through this guy and through his family and through his descendants. In fact, it goes on in the Bible and it says it in other ways. I think just to drive the point home, it says in Psalm 108, in the 8th verse, Psalm 108, verse 8, it says, it says this. It says this. And it's very interesting. Very interesting. It says, Judah is my scepter. Judah, praise. The people of praise are my scepter. Judah is my scepter. Isn't that something? Well, what's that all about? I mean, that, that's a whole different culture than where we live, right? But, but, you know, a scepter is a symbol of the king or the queen. It's a, it is a symbol of authority. In the Persian culture, we read, for example, the story of Esther. You've got a whole book in the Bible called Esther, right? And Esther wanted to get and appear before the king uh, who she was married to, and, but you just couldn't walk in, right? And so she, she, she came into the presence. She came down the corridor so that the king could see her, and, and he raised his scepter to her. Remember that story? I'll, I'll read the verse. I'll read the verse. It says this. When the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, she obtained favor in his sight. Esther chapter 5, verse 2. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. And so Esther came near and touched the top of his scepter. That's pretty cool. Isn't that interesting? But you see, she couldn't come in till he extended his scepter. But he saw Esther, the woman he loved, and he put out his scepter. And then she knew she could come in, that it was okay. She wasn't allowed to go in if he did not raise the scepter. And so then she went in to see him. There's a tremendous application there when it says in Psalm 108, verse 8, Judah is my scepter. Praise is my scepter. And may I share a couple of applications with you that I think speak to us where we're at this morning. When the Father, when the King, when the Father, our Father, sees us praising Him. He raises His scepter to us. When we begin to praise Him, I believe in the symbolism of what is being said here, that the Father raises His scepter to us and to you. And He invites us into His court in a new way and in a fresh way and in a more intimate way and into his very presence. He extends his scepter towards us. I believe that. That's part of it. But there's more here. Because it doesn't just say that he raises his scepter to us, to those that are praise. What does it say? It says something a little different. It says, Judah is my scepter. Praise is my scepter. So it's not just that he raises his scepter. Yeah, I got that. That's good. Uh, I won't disagree with that. That's bang on. That's good speaking, Stan. Good preaching, Stan. Amen. That's good. But, but, but there's something else here, and, and, that, and, that is, and that is this. Praise you, Lord. We become his scepter. 
I think that's what that's saying. Praise is the scepter. And there is something about that, I believe, that is very true here, that as we become worshipers and praisers, as we give testimony, as we praise and so forth, we become a person and we become an individual, but we become a people that, that, that are the scepter of the Lord. We become, therefore, so, so the king is there and he raised his scepter towards the queen and she was able to come in. So, 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 so we become the scepter of the Lord that, that extends who he is to others. We become an instrument in the hand of the Lord. As we praise even more so, we begin to become a scepter that, that, that opens up who the Lord is to others. That shows the scepter of His love and of His grace. That we don't have to be like Queen Esther who came in fear and trembling to the corridors of the king. Oh, I hope he raises his scepter because then he'll invite me in. If he doesn't, then one of the guards could chop off my head or something like that. There's fear and all that kind of stuff. Though that we become the scepter of the Lord to say, there's nothing to fear in the Lord. There's nothing to fear about the Lord. The Lord loves us. His heart is for us. He's a God of grace. He's a God of goodness. He's a God of love. And, and as we worship and as we praise Him, His, his aroma and His fragrance and reality of who, who He is becomes more evident in us individually and collectively. And there, thereby we raise the scepter in a sense towards people. You know what I'm saying? That people see, yes, Jesus. Jesus is real. Give your testimony. When you raise... When you raise your testimony, you are raising the scepter. You are showing who he is, that he is a God of glory. He is a God of love. That he is for us, that he is the Savior. That he isn't just a distant God that made the whole university. The whole universe, I didn't mean university, I mean universe. But he, but he is the God, he is the God that I can talk to about my coffee. He is the God that I can talk to about my headaches. He is the God I can talk to about trying to get my horse in the trailer. He is the God of gods and the Lord of lords that desires not only that fills the whole universe, but wants to be close to you. And praise is one of the ways that just makes that real through your life. Isn't that right? So be a praiser. Be a person that gives testimony. And when testimony comes, give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen? That sound good? So God dwells in our praises. Testif testimony magnifies the Lord. It overcomes the dark prince. It overcomes the spirit of darkness. It overcomes all of that stuff, and it sheds the light of the Lord into the world in which we live. So, no wonder, from the throne room, we find the people of God gathered, and he says, and, he's, and the throne room, and declares from the heart of the Father, give praise, give praise, give praise to the Lord. Give praise through testimony, give praise through song, give praise through your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah, amen, isn't that right? Yes, give praise in your world, give praise to your people, give praise to the Lord in your family, give praise in the church, give praise to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today, we, we thank you, Lord, we give praise to you today. And Lord, uh, last week I, I shared and I said, Lord, on this day, give people uh, things to remember in testimony that maybe they have forgotten that they would give testimony. I pray today, Lord, that, that our testimony would be heard, that you would give me, give me and give us the boldness to give testimony, whether that be in church or in our family circle or in our world, how that looks and how to get traction in it, Lord, that, that it's not just blared out that doesn't get traction, but that it's appropriate within the context of where I live and the people I am, that you'll show me how to raise the scepter. That people see the heart of you, your heart, Lord. People see how much you love them. People see the place that is so attractive and they want no more. We ask these things today in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. You're going to have to come up here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you better come up here. Oh. <laughs> oh, you come on up. Yeah, you go ahead in the mic and just share your thought okay. there. Um, it's on. About, it's good. Um, last year, I wanted to say thank you. There were, I know there were a few families that were really praying for me. Um, 
Uh, last November, I became ill, and I've been, I have been really ill for quite some time, and I've had, now I've had a couple surgeries, and I'm good. Uh, good. But it was just sort of one thing happened, and then from that, more and more things kept happening. And uh, so I just really wanted to thank people, anybody mm. who, for the prayer that, um, that they, you good. joined with us in yeah. prayer as a family, and I really appreciate that. Um, and some days, uh, like some days I, uh, I was physically not feeling well, but some days emotionally it was almost more than what I, well, more than, I, it was a hard time to get through some days. I just felt really discouraged, and I'm sure that that prayer just, just held me together. Um, the other thing too, though, I wanted to say was, um, I have arthritis or had arthritis quite badly and, um, I'd been praying. They were wanting to give me some meds and the meds aren't good for your organs. If you can possibly stay away from it, I wanted to do that. And I had been researching on some things to do. And my friend Marilee called me from Courtney and said, Hey, I just saw this doctor from Newfoundland and so anyway, I started researching that, and the Lord gave me the, I mean, I, I just totally, this was all the Lord, because at the time when Marilee called me, it was just like I was having a lot of pain. And I changed, I did some things, and, and when this was talked about coffee, I was thinking about this. The Lord, sometimes he just gives us these wonderful things, but sometimes he really makes us work. Mm. And I've had to majorly change my lifestyle as far as my diet and those kinds of things. But he's still giving it to me. He's, I am 90%. My pain level has reduced by 90%. I think I can quite honestly say wow. that. A year ago, I walked with a cane. We just did, a month or so ago, we just did holidays and, um, on Quadra Island. I did five hikes. And I did the, a hike, a five-hour hike up the side of a mountain. And I had no pain. So I just want, like, sometimes we that's do good. have to make those changes that we don't want to yeah, make. Right. And I'm not saying that's easy. Yeah. Some days it's kind of a pain, actually. But it works. And yeah. the, Lord, the Lord doesn't always just give us that easy answer, but he <laughs> always gives us the answer yeah, in ta good. over time. Yeah, good stuff, Brenda. Thank you for that. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. So we give you thanks, Lord. Thank you. All right, well, uh, with that, we'll uh, close our service, and God bless you. Have an awesome day. Good week. Amen.